Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, dear students, uh, today inshallah we're going to talk about cholinergic receptors and cholinergic receptor acting drugs. Uh, the LOs, as students should be able to compare muscarinic and nicotinic receptors, define and classify cholinergic drugs, understand the pharmacological actions of cholinergic drugs. Uh, so, uh, number one, classification of cholinergic receptors. Cholinergic receptors, as you know, they are the receptors for acetylcholine and uh, agonist drugs, drugs that can act like acetylcholine. So, these receptors are subdivided into uh, nicotinic and muscarinic receptors. Nicotinic are further subdivided into the muscle type NM, ganglion type NM, CNS type, and those which are expressed on adrenal medulla. The second uh, subtype of cholinergic receptors is muscarinic receptors. These are further subdivided into M1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So first, let's talk about the nicotinic receptors. Why we start with nicotinic receptors? We start with them because they are the beginning. In the beginning, they start from the CNS, as we will see in a minute. Why they are called nicotinic? They are called nicotinic because the action of acetylcholine on these receptors can be reproduced by the injection of nicotine. They are ligand gate ion channels, as we said before. Okay, so this the nicotinic receptor, acetylcholine, is a ligand. Ligand gated ion channel. So the gating is here. Here is a, a, a ligand that binds to this gate. So ligand gated ion channel, the receptor here, and this is the ligand. I start to bind to this receptor on the nicotinic receptor. Nicotinic receptor then undergoes conformational change and allow the passage of ion like sodium and calcium. Okay, as you know, this can lead to uh, action potential or uh, uh, certain uh, parasympathomimetic action on certain effector organs. Uh, <clears throat> do you remember this figure? I said before, this is a very, very important figure. Do you remember? Anyway, if you don't remember, I'm reminding you again. Remember, I said this is a very important uh, figure. Here is the CNS, okay, brain, spinal cord. I said at that time, everything, any neuron that's coming out of the central nervous system will release at the end acetylcholine. This acetylcholine will act on nicotinic receptor. I say the, the receptor, the uh, neurotransmitter is acetylcholine and the receptor is nicotinic. Acetylcholine, nicotinic. Okay, acetylcholine, nicotinic. And further subdivision, NN. Because these are in the ganglia, they call them NN. Okay, NN. Okay, again, acetylcholine, nicotinic receptor coming directly from the CNS. Acetylcholine coming from CNS. Nicotinic, NN. Again, coming uh, from diacrom CNS, releasing acetylcholine, and the receptor is nicotinic because I think the adrenal medulla is kind of a modified ganglia. So all of these are in N. Okay. Uh, finally, the somatic neuron. You know, somatic neuron, there is no ganglia. There is no ganglion in somatic neuron, right? So the nerve travels all the way from the CNS into the effector organ over here, which is here, is the muscle. The receptor here is NM. Okay, so N is nicotinic, 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 and the further subdivision in the second N is neural or ganglion type. Okay, and here is M, which means M type. Okay, I think it's easy now. So everything is coming out directly from the CNS. There is a neurotransmitter is thylcholine, the receptor is nicotinic. Okay, and everything in the ganglion is NN. Okay. And, uh, and and there is also another receptor on the adrenal medulla, and on the muscle is NM muscle. Okay. Okay. So further details of these receptors: the NM, the somatic one, the one on the on the skeletal muscle. Okay. So the receptor is on the motor in the plate. Okay. It's post synaptic. It's post synaptic. It's it increases sodium permeability, so it's excitatory. Okay. Agonist on these. Uh, NM receptors are like acetylcholine, carbacol, saxinylcholine. 
very important. Succinylcholine has another uh, name, which is succinylcholine. Please remember this letter S. Succinylcholine. Uh, this stimulates the skeletal muscle, causing contraction. Uh, uh, antagonists are uh, like uh, tubocurarine and hexamethone. Same spelling as succinylcholine and hexamethone. If you get confused, use this mnemonic S for stimulatory. So this stimulates NM nicotinic receptors. Okay, and H consider it's inhibitory. Okay, so it will inhibit the uh, nicotinic NM receptors, okay? So these are the examples. As you know, in pharmacology, all the names of the drugs are important. They are expressed as the motor NDP. The second subtype is NN, a ganglion type. It's present in autonomic ganglia in all, all autonomic ganglia. Everything, sympathetic, parasympathetic, yes. Doctor, is acylcholine, yes, sympathetic. Parasympathetic, the same. It's a style clean and the receptor is nicotine. Okay. Uh, the receptors are postsynaptic. Okay. So now if the, if the, the ganglia is here, okay, the receptor will be here. Uh, it's uh, increased sodium permeability, so it's excitatory agonists are like, like uh, style clean, carbacol, and nicotine. Uh, antagonist uh, examples mecamylamine and trimetaphan. The third subtype is uh, the CNS type. It depends on the central nervous system. It could be pre or post synaptic. Again, it's excitatory. Agonists are like uh, nicotine and acetylcholine. Uh, the functions cause pre and post synaptic stimulation of many brain regions. Antagonist uh, example is mecamylamine. The last uh, subtype is expressed on the adrenal medulla, where acetylcholine binds to these receptors. Nicotinic receptors on the adrenal medulla to stimulate the secretion of adrenaline from adrenal medulla. Okay. The second subtype is muscarinic receptors. Okay. Again, why they are called the muscarinic? They are called the muscarinic because the action of acetylcholine on these receptors could be reproduced by the injection of muscarine. So it's alkaloid uh, that can activate muscarinic receptors. Uh, as we said before, we, we just talked about two receptors, two receptor families. We said ligand gate ion channel and G protein coupled receptors. Okay, we said nicotinic receptors are ligand gate ion channel, whereas uh, muscarinic receptors are G protein coupled receptors. Uh, as we said before, there are five subtypes five subtypes one, two, three, four, and five. The odd numbers one, three, and five. They are GQPCR. We said that uh, in the previous lecture. Okay, so they increase inositol. They activate uh, uh, phospholipase C, which splits PIP2 into diacylglycerol and inositol triphosphate. Uh, the even numbered receptors M2 and M4. They are, they are GIPCR. They inhibit adenylate cyclase and thus uh, reduce the amount of cyclic NP. The third uh, category is G protein, could be G protein associated or gated channels, okay, whereas uh, where the muscarinic acetylcholine receptor may activate or inhibit potassium and calcium channels. Okay, uh, where are they? Where are these receptors? They are located in tissues innervated by postgranulic parasympathetic neurons. They are on smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and gland cells. We'll see in the next slide. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> they are also, this is kind of an exception to the rule. The sweat gland, the nerve to the sweat gland starts as sympathetic. So it's thoracolumbar. It's thoracolumbar. And then uh, the post ganglionic uh, neuron uh, releases at the end acetylcholine which acts on muscarinic receptor. Doctor, this is sympathetic. Yes, I know. It's sympathetic, but this is just an exception to a rule, a rule where uh, the, uh, the nerve is sympathetic, but at the end it releases acetylcholine, and the, the receptor is muscarinic. You know, if you need to know further, there is muscarinic M3. These receptors are also expressed in the central nervous system, and the details are in the next very big table. Okay, here's the M1, 2, 3, 4, 
five locations. Uh, M1 is located, it's called the neural. Neural, the name helps, right? We said before. So it's expressed in autonomic ganglia, in sound, also in the nervous neural, it's also expressed on glands, like salivary gland, gastric gland, uh, lacrimal gland, and on cerebral cortex. Okay. The cerebral response is easy. Now we know it's GQ, right? So I expect uh, insulin to try to speak, expect DAG, okay? The functional response, excitation of the CNS, and gastric secretion. Please remember, sometimes you get confused because it's called the neural. Yes, neural, this is the main function, but it, uh, uh, it also enhances gastric secretion. That's why we use drug like pyrenzepine as a drug to treat peptic ulcer by inhibition of this M1 receptor because pyrenes means selective inhibitor of this receptor. Agonists uh, are like, these are non-selective agonists actually. They work on all subtypes of receptor M1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like acetylcholine, carbacol, and so forth. Uh, uh, non-selective uh, antagonists are like atropine, dicyclovirine, and so forth. And selective is pyrenezepine, only selective at uh, M1 uh, subtype. The second subtype is M2, it's called the cardiac, because mainly it's expressed on cardiac cells, and the heart and the atria, but also it's expressed on uh, some areas in the CNS. Uh, again, it's GI, so it decreases cyclic AMP, functional response, cardiac inhibition, so that's why the uh, uh, acetylcholine and parasympathetic drugs can cause decrease in the heart rate. Uh, neural inhibition, central muscarinic effects, uh, like tremor and hypothermia. The, uh, again, the agonist are the same. Uh, selective antagonist is galamine. M3 is called the glandular smooth muscle. Glandular smooth muscle. Uh, it's expressed on the uh, exocrine glands, such as gastric glands, and also the smooth muscle, such, uh, such as GIT, airway, urinary bladder, and on the endothelium. Uh, it's GQ, again, we said 1, 3, 5, GQ. Okay, so, uh, uh, so it increases the inositol triphosphate and calcium. Functional response, uh, uh, gastric salivary secretion, and uh, small muscle contraction, ocular accommodation for what? For near vision, yes, good. And vasodilatation. Okay, the selective agonist is sevimilin, and the selective antagonist is dairy penicillin. M4 and uh, M5, these are uh, the receptors are have been discovered recently. So these both receptors are expressed on CNS, okay, and uh, they are M4 GI, so it decreases or uh, increases the cyclic AMP. Uh, the function response enhances locomotion. Uh, selective antagonists are like mamba toxin. Uh, M5 again on the CNS, it GQ so increase uh, in cytotriphosphate. triphosphate and uh, the function is unknown. Okay, so uh, now we need to talk about drugs. We need to talk about pharmacology, okay? So cholinergic drugs, they are called also parasympathomimetics or cholinomimetics, all are the same. They either act directly or indirectly, directly by activating the receptor right away, okay? But they also could act indirectly by inhibiting acetylcholine sterase enzyme that break down that breaks down acetylcholine, so they enhance or uh, enrich or increase, augment the amount of acetylcholine at the receptor site, so acetylcholine will exchange this action. So they are indirect parasympathomimetics. Okay, uh, so uh, look at this hierarchy now. So now cholinergic drugs are uh, subdivided into direct acting, as we said, they act direct on the receptor, like uh, choline esters, including acetylcholine, Methylcholine, Bethanic coal, Carbacol. You see here the, this root coal is everywhere, so it makes it easy for you to remember which subtype of these drugs. Uh, alkaloids like muscarine and pilocarpine. And the indirect acting, as we said, they inhibit the acetylcholine sterase enzyme. If they inhibit acetylcholine uh, sterase, so this will. Uh, enrich the amount of acetylcholine, which can exert its action. They are either bind to the acetylcholine uh, stress reversibly, okay, like physostigmine, pyridostigmine, eustigmine, you see here the suffix stigmine, it's easy to remember that these drugs are acetylcholine stress inhibitors or indirect acting cholinergic drugs or indirect acting parasympathomimetic, 
Hydrophonium and tacrine. Irreversible are in, uh, uh, drugs that bind in, in irreversibly to the uh, acetylcholine esterase enzyme. So it will inhibit it almost irreversibly. So uh, these are poisons, actually. Uh, like uh, uh, the phosphorothionates, these poisons, these insecticides, parathione, malathione, and propoxone. We'll talk about these in detail later, inshallah. Okay, so uh, you remember we talked about it before, okay, but in a different, little bit different figure, but the, the idea is the same, okay. So this is the cholinergic transmission, here is the acetylene entering into the synaptic vesicle via choline carrier, acetylcholine then is stored in the synaptic vesicle, then it will be released, right, and act on the receptor. This cycle here, the, usually the scientists invest this information, okay, to develop drugs that can modify the activity of these uh, receptors or activities are in these steps or in these stages. Number one, what they play with? They play with uh, precursor transport blockade. What are the precursors? Number one is choline, okay? So, uh, uh, hemicholinium inhibits choline carrier, which is also called what? Hmm? Called what? Yes. Carrier A, good. So this choline carrier will be inhibited, so this will inhibit, this hemocholine will inhibit the uh, 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 precursor transport, so no, no choline will be transferred into the synaptic vesicle. Okay, uh, another class of drug is uh, Vizamicol. Okay, Vizamicol, there is no uh, inhibitor for the choline stress enzyme, choline acetyl, choline acetyl transfer enzyme. And uh, the third one is the uh, uh, storage of a cyclin into the synaptic physical, right? Uh, as we remember before, we talked about bisamicol inhibits acetylcholine carrier, which is also called what? Yes, carrier B. Uh, so it will inhibit the storage of acetylcholine into the final, uh, into the synaptic physical. Third thing is the release. There are two classes or two types of drug drugs that facilitate the release, like choline and uh, 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 blackwood spider venom, spider venom uh, lateral toxin, this, this facilitates the release, okay, or promote the release of acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. And the uh, second one to uh, prevent transmitter release, so inhibit transmitter release, uh, like botulinum toxin. Okay. Uh, the last thing what? You need to work on the receptor, right? It's just an easy uh, work, okay? Or I'm sorry. Uh, before that, in the synaptic clip, acetylcholine strays, acetylcholine could be broken down by choline strays enzyme, right? But there are drugs that we just talked about them uh, that can inhibit this enzyme, like this mean, okay, inhibit the acetylcholine strays. So acetylcholine itself will be uh, uh, in big amount on the receptor, so it will facilitate the action of acetylcholine. That's why they're called indirect acting parasympathomagnetics. The last thing is the receptors, okay? So some drugs inhibit and some drugs activate the muscarinic and uh, muscarinic receptor. Here it's mus muscarinic receptor, receptor agonist and antagonist. Okay, so finally, the uh, effects of direct acting choline receptor, choline receptor stimulants. So drugs that activate the muscarinic receptors, what they do? Take it from up, down, easy? Yes. So on the eye, okay, they cause contraction. In the iris, sphincter muscle, they cause contraction. That's why it causes meiosis, okay? Constriction of the, uh, uh, the pupil, right? Uh, on the ciliary muscle, they cause contraction. So it accommodate for near vision. It's just parasympathetic, guys. Wrist undigest. I'm in a case of wrist. Why should I? Accommodate for far vision, just near vision is enough. Okay, then uh, on the heart, uh, on the uh, please notice here that the parasympathetic nervous system has little or no effect on the ventricles. Okay, so mainly on the atria. So uh, on the SA node, sinoatrial node, the pacemaker of the heart, they uh, cause they inhibit, they cause bradycardia on the atrium. They reduce, reduce contraction of the atria only. On the AV node, they reduce conduction velocity. So because of this and this, they cause bradycardia. Uh, on the arterioles, they cause dilatation via nitric oxide. 
nitric oxide okay similar to gs protein coupled receptor but just replace the a with g how okay gs pcr activates adenylate cyclase right just remove the adenine make it guanine so this guy activates guanylate cyclase which converts GTP into cyclic GMP. On GSPCR, we said ATP and cyclic AMP. Nitric oxide activates uh, guanylate cyclase, which convert GTP, guanosine triphosphate, into cyclic GMP, okay, which activates protein kinase G. Just please, uh, after the lecture, review it and compare. You will find just you replace A with G. It will be the action of nitric oxide. G, I mean guanylate, guanosine. Okay. Then on the bronchi, bronchial muscle, muscle contraction and increased secretion. On the GIT, remember it's rest and digest. Okay. During the uh, parasympathetic nervous system activation, the uh, or it's predominant in rest and digest situation. On the motility of the GIT, it will increase. Okay, to enhance the, you know, the peristaltic movement and digestion and at the end of the defecation. GIT, increased secretion to help with the digestion. Okay, sphincters, they should relax, right? And at the end, defecation. And the gallbladder, contraction, so that you can push bile, which facilitate the digestion of fats to emulsify uh, fats, which will be easy target for the lipase enzymes later. Because these enzymes are protein in nature, okay, they're hydrophilic. They are hydrophilic, so they cannot deal with the lipid. So gallbladder will release bile salts, bile and bile salts, which will emulsify lipids, which uh, uh, after that will meet on the duodenum, you know, uh, the duodenum uh, in the, I mean, the pancreas, pancreatic secretion will, uh, will be released into the duodenum and then will mix with the fats after their emulsification, then it could be digested. So it's undigested, okay. On the liver of the urinary bladder, okay, on the detrusor muscle, the muscle and the, uh, the muscle wall in the urinary bladder, contraction. On the trigone and the sphincter of the muscle, okay, they relax so that the, the, the guy or the, the lady uh, can micturate, okay, can urinate. On the male sex organ penis, uh, they cause erection. Not ejaculation, please, because ejaculation is enhanced by Sympathetic nervous system, and we'll, as we will learn, inshallah, in next lecture. So, this is just erection. Okay. And on the level of glands, just take it from me, all glands, there will be increase in secretion, sweat glands, salivary, lacrimal gland, nasopharyngeal gland. But please remember that sweat gland is sympathetic, the neuron is sympathetic, but at the end, it releases acetylcholine, and the receptor is muscarinic, muscarinic M3 receptor. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Okay, please enjoy and say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And see you, see you in uh, next lecture, inshallah. Subhanahu Rabbik Rabbil Izzat Amma Yasukur. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.